All right, so now we get into another part on discipline right here, and this is Sir John Fortescue. I want you to pay attention to this one because then we start going sideways. Mm -hmm. I have in my mind rather those excellent but generally unthinking persons who shrink with horror from the idea of a man's abdicating his civil rights. What, they say, a man must obey even an unjust command under pain it may be of death? It is monstrous. For purposes of civil life, it might be monstrous, but not for the purposes in, of implicit obedience, which is the thing that matters in the army. Let there be justice as far as possible by all means. But as a general principle, it is better for an army that an injustice should be done than that an order should be disobeyed. This, however, is an argument that cannot appeal to our to our imaginary objector because he has read no military history. So that's just very disturbing, this whole thing, and it really doesn't comply with anything that I say, which is I want you to question orders, and if they're not good orders, you shouldn't obey them. And he's saying, no, 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 it's better to do something unjust as long as you're obeying orders. And I did a little bit of research about John Fortescue, and you know, obviously I don't agree with this, and actually, in the new version of the book, mm-hmm. he the the guy that writes the forward to the new version of this specifically calls out John Fortescue and says we removed him. The him he's everything. gone from the book. Dang. And what I found out about him was yes, he was in the army. He was a major in the army, um, but I don't think he was in any combat. And what I do know is that he was the royal librarian from 1905 until 1926 and he died in 1923 so he didn't go to World War One where all these other guys are World War One World War two mm. veterans mm. he was the the royal librarian and it's interesting when he says because he has read no military he doesn't said because he's never been in combat before mm. he says he's read that the person that would object to this has never read military history well okay so he's actually, going with the yeah, theory yeah he's going with the theory yeah and and if you want to take this and stretch it out more broadly, this attitude, you know, I hate World War One. I. I hate World War One because it was so based on obedience. Mm. And you are going to charge. We are going to charge this trench. All seven thousand of us are going to charge tomorrow morning at zero six thirty. We're going to go over the top. We're going to get mowed down by machine guns, and then then people are going to follow us and do the same thing. And the, they, the guys were so obedient mm. and brave and just selfless to do that. But this attitude is what made that war so devastating because no one said, hey, wait a second. This doesn't seem smart to me. Yeah. I just watched, you know, a two, three, four battalions or two, three, four regiments get mowed down. And now you're telling me I'm going to do the same thing tomorrow yeah. with my men. No, I want you to question my orders. I want you to say no. If I'm making you do something that doesn't make sense, I want you to say no. And if I can't explain it to you in a logical way, then I should rethink what I'm saying to you. Mm-hmm. So, Mr. John Fortescue we're gonna to have to say that we've kind of changed our opinion on on obedience and there are more important things than obedience in a team in a military team and in the business world 